All right, so uh, this afternoon we're going to revisit a little more of the uh, structure function relationships of different brain areas, focusing on some different species of animals. Uh, and then we're going to give you the opportunity to build your own brains, so brains of an animal that, that you've come up with in your imagination. Uh, but before we get started, I actually wanted to touch on something, so I looked into the literature a little bit. We had had a question at the end of last session that asked uh, whether or not we could stimulate a particular region of the brain uh, to increase compassion. Uh, so what I found was that um, uh, about 10 years ago, there was a study that stimulated a particular region of the hippocampus. And what they found when they stimulated that was that people that were experiencing that stimulation spontaneously smiled and felt happiness. Oh. And so while happiness obviously doesn't equate to compassion, so there, there are certain correlates for both kind of what we consider positive and negative emotions. Um, so, you know, maybe I can read a little bit more about it if people have questions, but I just sort of saw the, the outcome of the study and I didn't get into the details because I didn't have time. Alright, so that, that aside, now we're going to focus back on some different brain regions. And I want to show you um, some brains of different species, and we can look at them and think about why their brains might be shaped this way, and how the structure of their brains affects the function of them. Um, so here we have a, a cat, just a, a regular um, cat, and we're looking at the brain from different angles. Um, so does anybody remember what this portion of the brain is? Olfactory bulb? Yes, exactly. So this is the olfactory bulb and we can tell that it's pretty well developed in cats, especially if we look, so this is the bottom of the brain. You look here, you can see how it's a pretty well-developed structure. So what else can you tell me about cats? Maybe something about the way that they move and which brain structure that might affect. Uh, 
the auditory uh, cortex. So they have pretty good hearing. It's, it's actually hard for us to look at here. The auditory cortex is kind of buried a little bit. Um, so we can't really see it, but, but maybe, so that's correct, but maybe think a little bit more about the way they move. Uh, she Oh, the cerebellum might be. Yeah, that's, a, that's exactly right. So cats are very agile, right? They have really good timing. If you take a cat, you turn it upside down and you drop it, it can flip itself over to land on its feet. We have a saying in, in English that, uh, you know, that cats always land on their feet. So actually in comparison to the size of the rest of their brain and the size of their body, their cerebelli, cerebellums, <laughs> The cerebellum of a cat is very, very well developed and, and fairly large. Right, so good. Now I, I just wanted to take a second and show you sort of uh, serial sections through the cat's brain so we can sort of see the different structures. That was going really fast. So what we're actually looking at here is sort of the, uh, a portion of the frontal lobe of the cat, and right down here is the olfactory bulb, and it's actually remarkable how large the olfactory bulb of the cat is, and you can see it pretty well illustrated there. Uh, so we can sort of see these serial sections through the cat brain. I actually see a little bit of hippocampus in here. That's the top of the, that's the top of the, um, what is it, the, where the hippocampus come, wraps up around. All right. All right, and we're starting to now get into the cerebellum, and we can see, like, for, compared to the size of the entire brain, the cerebellum is actually really massive in the cat. Yeah, that's really big. And we can kind of let it go sort of the whole way to the end. Not to forget one of the most important parts of the animal, the spinal cord. Alright, so we can move forward a little into our next animal, the giant anteater. 
ani thoksal ani buthong ma sange ge simje je re khoy ge leverest and uh does everyone know what an ant eater is oh kyan so ge thoksal ai simje di kharim ba kingi ves no no i thought there were ant eaters in india uh dine thong ma sange di de yo mar ves de wala So uh ant eaters are are kind of neat and you guys have massive termite mounds. I can't believe there aren't ant eaters here. Uh so ant eaters are are about this tall, they're pretty long, uh they're they're pretty hairy. They have a really really long snout and then a very long tongue. Oh, that then the thongma sangye ge simje je ro wa ko chese di ge che eno ko ko karo ringbu yo res. Ani ko yo ge na gun di pe di ringbu shi wo je res na zo po si ro wa. So even if you didn't necessarily know what an ant eater looks like, what do you think is its primary sensory organ that it that it uses to navigate the world? Ah, the Quran ki the the day ki simjein the khan zoge thong manyum bai na ya, wa. Ani simjein the Quran kuriu nalo la phasu the drone ani seetsu vekapsus wangbo phiji che the ani shuk che shuk karin gires. smell yeah i mean this is this is huge right so this is all olfactory bulb and all of these projections kind of going back through here carry scent information yeah this an anteater no one's ever seen one of these uh de ni uh thoma sangye simje de de res ro koran lubolo e pu mangbo do wa ani khoy ge lebala ta wa ina ni thiso ri bo de hajang ge chimbo do wa So that's an ant eater. They're pretty cool. They eat ants, unsurprisingly. Ah, ne di simje di ge da sae zo di ni thoma cha de res. Do you know the uh the big red termite mounds that you see sometimes um in the countryside? Ah, de ba la ngan zo ga ga da ani singna da de ni ge la thokar yo wa. Thokar kyan zo sin yo wa. Those make ant eaters very very happy. So maybe you guys need more ant eaters to take care of the termites. Ah, and chiche na da di di wala ni thoma mangbu ye za di da thoksa ge simje di yona ya bu yigi res. So watch watch in particular towards the front end of this video. You'll see how many sections there are of the olfactory bulb before we start hitting the rest of the brain. ดิลงเนี่ยจิตเตงกิเอสรอดิลงเนี่ยดิเตงดิเตยดุเนเชเนพาจับละดูเรสอันนี้ดึงกิตะทังโบชาดิโคดิเรตวาทิโซเรบุ
the presence of fold. Right, right. So it's very, this is very, very smooth compared to the brain of both the anteater and the um, cat. And even the anteater and the cat, when compared to our brains, are comparatively smooth. So what might that tell you about the number of cells that their brain has or about the, the connectivity between different brain areas? Uh, Yes, they think that there is a, a variation in the number of neurons between these. So what, what type of variation? Which one would have more neurons? Which one might have fewer neurons? <laughs> Ah, okay, so the humans have the most? I don't know if I would say the most, but definitely more. Than, yes, the most of those three, for sure, or four. Um, yeah, so generally we think that the more folds the brain has, the, the larger the area, and, and we, we said about the, that shell, that cortex, having a lot of the cell bodies in the brain. So when you have sort of less area, less cortex, right, there, there are uh, fewer neurons and then fewer connections between the cells. Uh, yeah, and so these, a, a lot of these animals that I've been showing you so far that have fewer sort of folds in, um, fewer connections, they're, they're not, not very smart, right? Uh, all right, so the last one I want to show you is this, this brain right here. Don't tell them what it is right away. I'm sure somebody, some people can read it. So if, if you can't read what this is, what do you think, what kind of animal do you think this might be? Ah. Pew. Okay. Monkey. Some are saying monkey, bear. Saying monkey. Um, what do you? What? What kind of traits do you think that this animal might have? Oh, that level of tenor. Wow. Any simjian digi karsure Quran la keju masuna kariyo sares. Nuba masuna kariyo sares. Okay. A very sensitive nose. It does. In fact, this animal can smell its prey from about two kilometers away. Um, what else might you be able to tell about the animal by the, by the uh, shape and structure of its brain? Okay, uh, looking at the cerebellum, uh, they think that this animal is quite agile. They're, they're definitely fast. Um, I, I don't, they're, they're pretty big, so it might be 
they're not super agile, but they are very coordinated and they're very fast. They're very good. They're very good runners. Very good swimmers. Uh, that's so what, what else can you tell me about, about the way this brain looks in comparison to the others and how that might influence the, the, the animal? Uh, Maybe uh, intelligent? Yes, they are very smart. Um, their spatial reasoning is very good. Um, they actually use tools. Um, they've been known to uh, take objects to throw them at their prey so that they can catch them more easily. So I give you a hint, it's, it's not a monkey, but it's one of the few animals that we do know uses tools. It's not an ape, it's not a primate. Okay. Uh, Tom, bear? He's saying bear? Yep. La. Soja Karina. Ah. Tabagal de Gekha. Okay. Migu. Okay. Migu rig the name Maresa. Migu da Piu da de rig the Maris. Ah. Timore. Okay. Timondi, ya Tom Girigre. Ah. So are they saying? So he's saying maybe Yeti. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's I don't know whether the Yeti is the right translation, but there's this. Uh, yeah, 40, you were great. 40, you were great. Right on. 40. Get 25 miles an hour to 40 kilometers per hour. So, so uh, it, it's funny they say Yeti because uh, last year when I had... Um, so first we'll say this is a bear. This is a polar bear. Um, last year when when I was teaching at Sarah, I had students draw phylogenetic trees and they drew in yetis that were very closely related to bears. Uh, so far, however, we don't really have any convincing scientific evidence for the existence of the Yeti. Um, sorry. <laughs> Um, so, so you did, you did really well though, right? You, you saw that the well-developed sense of smell, like these, these animals are, are excellent in, in how fast they move. So if you have an animal that can smell you from uh, almost two kilometers away, that can run almost 40 kilometers, that can run about 40 kilometers an hour, you don't want to be around when it's hungry. <laughs> And just like you, you guessed from the amount of folds in the brain, these are, these are really highly intelligent animals. They have very, very good memories, very, very good 
um, spatial reasoning, spatial recognition, and uh, they're, they're able to do fairly complex tasks. Uh, Alright, so now it's, it's going to be your turn. I want you to um, come up to either pick an animal that you're familiar with or to come up with an imaginary animal or something, a yeti or a dragon or whatever you want. And I want you to do a couple of different things with that. First, I want you to, we're going to give you some different colors of Play-Doh. Sorry, that was a lot of talking. Yeah, we'll... Uh, we'll... So we're going to put you in groups of four, so you're going to have to agree on a particular animal. Um, so we want you to be able to, you can build the brains with different types of clay. You can use the different colors to represent different portions of the brain. And alongside that, we also want you to draw a picture of your animal in sort of its natural habitat. And always keep in mind how the brain structure is going to influence the behavior of that animal. ตัดเสร็จแล้วเงยกอยดีนี่เลเบกิชาเชคันเดจิซื้อไปไหนเลเบกิดิซอยบคันเดจิตึนไปไหนยาดีนี่คราง <laughs> So uh, go ahead and form into groups of four. And we'll bring around some different colors of, of clay for you to use. Make it happen here, guys. So I put it, so I took out the anteater and then I put in a chimp after the polar bear because I think we'll get sort of that response next time too. So. All right, we'll start with this group over here. No need to be shy. I stand up here all day. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. All right, so, so tell us about what you have and how the brain describes it. Okay, so their brain is a rabbit's brain. <laughs> This is a shape. And the Okay. So the brain doesn't have much convolutions on it, and uh, the cerebellum is pretty large. Okay. <coughs> oh, so they have the temporal lobes on the side. Okay. Great. 
so they uh, they added the uh, the hippocampus under the bottom of this, although they are not sure exactly where it is. If it has. If it has, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, the extension at the front is the uh, olfactory bulb. Nice. So do you think that's the most defining characteristic of your animal? Yes. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Let's get a picture of you and your group with your... You could sit back down with your group and then I'll get a picture of... Everybody in the brain. Ah. This is the low, low level, right? Oh, consumer level, the low level is. So the, so their brain is the sheep's brain. That's a sheep. Oh, that's the ram. Oh, the the, the low level, sir. Uh. Low is. Oh, the yes, okay. it is a, it's a sheep. Remove the yellow chicken tail, man. This is the low level. Oh, so remove your good teeth, man. The level your good suit, yes, sir. They said they couldn't draw properly, but they have made pretty good brain. Yeah, I mean, it's got, it's got some, you know, it's got some wall. Oh, oh, then I'll pay to do one at Tongo do, sir. The level, the level, the color, the tongue, the ruler, and the tissue, the dosi, the bone, the tissue, 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 so they think that the, the sheep has a well developed olfactory bulb. Uh, it seems like the sheep were able to distinguish uh, between grasses, you know, grasses that are, you know, good for them or uh, those that are not good for them. Yeah. Tini <laughs> Payula Roa, Payula Consul Lug to the Jangbu Yores. They were looked to the Shira Jangbu Midos. They look the Payu Luis. So they put these convolutions on the uh, brain because uh, in their native place in Tibet, the sheep are pretty smart. All those sheep around here are not that smart. Yeah, I, I would. So we were just talking that sheep in general aren't very smart, but they actually have highly convoluted brains if you look at sheep brains. Uh, Ani <laughs> So the sheep uh, in their native place, uh, they could run fast yeah. and they are quite agile. So therefore they have the cerebellum quite well developed. Yeah, yeah. And there are, there are actually some sheep, uh, for example, in Italy that are able to climb on cliffs that are almost vertical. Uh, so they have a mouse brain. It's a mouse, okay. So since uh, the mouse have well developed a sense of smell, they have made an olfactory bulb yeah, pretty very, big. Very long olfactory bulb. Mm. 
So the, the rats are able to run and they are quite agile, so therefore the cerebellum must be well developed. So since uh Changbu Yosares, Kuran Seats, it seems that uh, the the rats are very clever uh, in uh, finding food and avoiding danger and so on, so therefore uh, they must have uh, uh, a frontal lobe that's capable of doing that. So with uh, rats and mice, rodents in general, um, they're, they are very good at finding food and sensing danger, but they rely much more on their sense of smell than actually any executive function. Uh, but rats in particular have fairly good spatial reasoning. Mice aren't, aren't nearly as good. So it's a yak spray. Yaks are, if they're anything like cow brains, they're pretty dumb. Uh, so, so, this is the front lobe, front, uh, then uh, parietal occipital lobe. Uh -huh. And uh, this is the cerebellum, and this is the uh, medulla oblongata. So you probably, your cerebellum would actually go back here, right? Because it's behind, it's sort of underneath the occipital lobe, but above the brain stem. Oh. That's okay though. So the yaks, uh, they are able to uh, recognize their masters or other, you know, uh, animals. Uh, so therefore, that function may be because of the frontal lobe. Any? <laughs> Uh, usually the yaks are very brave, so they think that uh, their amygdala is well developed and uh, they are able to tolerate cold. It's even got a carrot. This is good. I like it. All right, talk to me. 
so the rabbit has a, a well-developed olfactory bulb because of its, uh, you know, sensitivity, sensitivity to smell. Oh. Oh. So the uh, uh, frontal lobe is not very uh, convoluted because uh, rabbits don't have as many neurons as we do, less neurons. It's the whole cerebrum, not yeah. frontal lobe. Yeah, yeah, it's the all of yeah. Uh, so the green thing is the cerebellum and uh, you know they have good movement and uh, quite agile. And the chungba. And this, this thing is uh, your favorite part, uh, yeah, so the three. spinal cord. Extra points for that. Can you give me a few more questions? Yes. 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 Any leba the shiraya was so too much they remove your tea, yes, sir. So they, they were not able to make the brain pretty good, uh, but they compensated with a good drawing. The music in the leba was a shiny master. Any the code be tisorch was you, yes, sir. Yes, that rangy do chain. Ani chidanta eleba gola shira shing mes ine tizori bodi chimbu yor samge dos. So yeah, that's uh, the old factory bulb. Is this a side view? Leba di kandi re di indes. Leba di chesha dos re ani kusha re kare. Leba dos re ya langgo re kandi re. So this this is how you should look at. It. Ah, okay. So what what type of a section is that? Uh, the in the Nangzhu Karres, Nangzhu Sumginani. Xingxia, right? Xingxia. Oh, yeah. Yes. So you know, okay. Then that. Oh, leba de shi ya da di na la ke zu mang bu shi lu da de. Hei ni kuan di da sub da lu ze xia ma mi xi ge hao ge ma song si. A le. So kun zu di sub da di du ze xia ma du ka ri qi ge me hao ge me sa. So I asked him what all these are and he said that you know he he's not sure. Neither are we. But he likes the shape and the color. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, um, horses, horses, uh, and other ungulates. They they look fairly similar. Like a horse brain actually looks really similar to like a deer. Um, but they uh, so in general they're um, they they have a decent sized cerebellum. They don't use their olfactory bulbs as much as some of the other sort of domesticated animals or the other outdoor animals that we think of. They're pretty small brains for their body size. Very few folds, which tells us a lot about how intelligent they are. Maybe if it were a flying horse, it would have a more developed motor cortex. 
Anitadi is the Portuguese and Nancy Chennai, Yogu Lishin, the days, and Yachua, you see it is. It is a very nice picture, though. Oh, in a remove, I would teach us. For your yeah, points for artistic talent. Ah, the movie I would tell you the learning gadget about taking is. Take a monkey brain. Pew the sort of a new reja, Tachira, the Jumbo Reja. ごてぼ。ああ。ごてぼ。ああ。ごてぼ。ああ。ごてぼ。ああ。ごてぼ。ああ。ごてぼ。ああ。ごてぼ。ああ。ごてぼ。ああ。ごてぼ。ああ。
Ani kura ngobo tharing bo tuzo thonya da changi la soko thonya la thoshi gres. Ani nabda di koron ye ani ke ngoma kari chee ba da ani tana chile koron zato 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 sahira o di chile ye ani ko zai adu kane sahiu mi tuzo thoya yen tem ba da ani koron ye zoo ta chi chena go la soko koron da chingi tuzo ye da di zoo ko gres. Ah, dene ne nabda di la dene ani da thoya la soko ba da. अन्य जासा दूध जंबल चेले कुछ दाने लसो बाद दूध चिको रेस्ट रहा तेरी चिड़ी चाया दूध लसो आ आ चाया दूध चाया दूध तेरे को रसोई रहा चेले ये तो तंदी ता ओम्बो इंजी चिको रेस्ट मास मुदी ओके सो द टेम्पोरल लोब हेल्प्स द याक टू हीर थिंग्स यू नो एट नाइट इफ देर आर प्रेस आउट द and also make distinction uh, as to uh, which grass is good and not. So we don't, all right, so you've ascribed the appropriate function to, or many of the appropriate functions to different brain areas. Although when we think about the brain development of a yak or a cow um, or a horse, generally the cortical area is not, not super developed. They generally have fairly Small cortices if, that are that are relatively smooth. Ah, just under that, under level, the any chassis suzuki is chilled in the chigire. Sungye di tada digi dos. That ine ya pena yak da paju da tada wo di kuju simje dosu ina kunju ki under leshun chero. Di leshun di under any chembu yo mares. Ra leshun chembu tubi yo mares. Does it not have a cerebellum because it's fairly clumsy? Ah, that di nang lo la ni karsre lening di mindos. Lenying yo mari bes. Lenying lagi. What are the little dots? Ah, di tu jangku tu tu kahre es. Di tu di eh, tu tu jauh di silu tu jinji jauh tu. Ah, di ni lagi ko dati ker, tu tu jinji tu mampu yara. Ah, tu tu silu silu tu tu dah. Kau budi. Oh, kau kau budi mailin. Oh, these are mailin mailin sheet. Oh, interesting. Myelin. So, uh, so it is a sagittal section, right? So in theory. <laughs> so I guess it could be part of the corpus callosum. <laughs> yeah, but the stuff down here can't be. Yeah. Oh, this would be more. They're actually supposed to be the oligodendrocytes. Oh, yeah. The, I, I see. I, I see. I see where you're going. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, we'll we'll get into a more detailed explanation of myelin in the future. <laughs> but if these are the areas, so if this is a, a sagittal view, right, and these are the areas connecting the the different hemispheres, then I there there is a lot of myelin right around where the corpus callosum would be. Uh, अने तंदर सशुंग ये वा सशुंग को तुकीर वा सशुंग के तुकीर वा पसंद जा अने तंदर दे पेजी की अने पेजी चीजें ऐसा देला अन काबु काबु दें दे मांगु नांग छोग रेस आ दे खरे रेस शिमी से उस अ कैट ओके दिस इज प्रोबेबली क्लोज टू व्हाट माय ड्राइंग ऑफ अ कैट वुड लुक लाइक दे अने लागजे दे क्या ना कोरान की लागजे ला दें दूर चेतु सच रे� all right, show me the, the brain. Oh, that is labor the ten roaches. The labor the average solution was this one. The cook has the two day choose the solution. It's a good deal of the angle into two. A tizor the chumbo. Oh, the tizor. Oh, the say what the tizor is. So the yellow thing is the old factory bulb. Okay. So in general, right, so the cat does have a fairly developed old factory bulb. But it sits um, mainly underneath the brain, right? So a little bit out in front and underneath. Res ani shimi ki chizo ribodi to chembu yo res yimba ina di ko leba ki wo de la wo de ni ani yo res ro antos dun la tuin dinge chio res. The leni is leni de chumbo ko zubinye cha na yama shu chumbo in zan ni leni do de chumbo ja shis. Ah, da konzu ki jangu de ani leni is ani kora nyemu shu yo zan leni de chumbo sha yes. And this green thing uh, is cerebellum. Uh, the, the cat is very agile, so they have 
made the cerebellum pretty big. Okay, yeah, that's true. The Jupanum is Jumbaja. And the man needed the uh, needed any Jumba in so this end uh, is the uh, beginning of the spinal cord. So uh, one of the things that's important to point out, I, I appreciate the, the um, referencing the spinal cord, uh, it actually comes out just underneath the cerebellum. But so if we sort of think of the brain as my fist, you'll have kind of the, you know, the cerebellum right here and the spinal cord comes out underneath it. And not very many folds because it just, it doesn't have that many. <laughs> I want to see the other side. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, can you any remote carinas? Birds. Birds. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, can you see Yes. Ani di. Ani ani tanda bawa. Tanda bici tanda bawa te kono. Ani tongsor te. Makan tongsor te pe cimbo inti sembala tanda bawa te. Hmm. Ani ni lanyang te. So the green thing is the occipital lobe mm -hmm. and uh, it uh, helps the bird to see uh, distant objects. Yep. Uh, and then the black thing is the uh, cerebellum, and it helps the birds uh, in its movement. Mm -hmm. uh, they think that the ol olfactory bulb is not very well developed, uh, so therefore they made it small. That's correct. So the, I'd say the only thing that was major, was there, was there anything else? Uh, no. So the only thing when you actually look at, at the brain of a bird that I would say is different than yours, that's in general, that's all correct. Um, but you see the area of their temporal lobe that's related to hearing is very, very large in birds because they have to learn really complicated songs. Uh, Alright, great, thank you. Get the last one. Do we have any other, anybody else? Uh, I, I think that everyone did, did a very good job, some, some obviously more artistic than others. Um, but what, what I really liked about it was the um, attribution of the appropriate functions to the appropriate structures for the most part. So, so I thought that was great. Alright, so if you haven't yet done so, please bring forward your, your um, clay and thank you very much for great activity. Uh, what about the brain model you want them? The, the, the clay, the models. Uh, that,